free agency has become a cornerstone of the modern NFL. It allows players the freedom to negotiate with any team, leading to blockbuster deals that redefine the league's balance of power. Just look at stars like Aaron Rodgers and Patrick Mahomes signing deals worth hundreds of millions, with guaranteed payouts that would have been unthinkable decades ago. Today, free agency gives players the leverage to shape their destinies and make decisions based on their worth. But it wasn't always this way. Before free agency became what we know now, the NFL was a different world. Contracts were often restrictive and players had limited control over their careers. But in 1988, one player changed everything. Wilbur Marshall, a linebacker for the Chicago Bears, he made a decision that shook the NFL to its core. When the Washington Redskins offered him a $6 million contract, the Bears decided not to match it, making him the first free agent to switch teams in over a decade. This move sparked a ripple effect, transforming player negotiations and changing how teams approach the entire concept of free agency. Yet many fans today have never heard how pivotal his contract was. So how did Wilbur Marshall, a defensive powerhouse, challenge the entire NFL system with a single contract? And how did his bold move pave the way for the free agency landscape that we see today? Let's dive in and uncover the story behind the $6 million deal that changed football forever. Wilbur Marshall's Rise Early NFL Success Wilbur Marshall entered the NFL as a first-round pick in the 1984 draft. Selected by the Chicago Bears, he quickly made a name for himself on one of the most formidable defenses in NFL history. Marshall played a crucial role on the 1985 Bears team a squad renowned for its aggressive style and dominance on the field. That season, the Bears went 15-1 and ultimately triumphed in Super Bowl XX with a commanding 46-10 victory over the New England Patriots. Marshall's presence was felt throughout the season. His speed, tackling, and ability to make game-changing plays made him a key part of the Bears' success. His performance in the NFC Championship game, where he returned a fumble for a touchdown, became one of the iconic moments of that historic season. Player reputation. Marshall's reputation in the league was built on his relentless playing style. Known as a fierce, hard-hitting linebacker, he had a unique ability to read offenses and disrupt plays. His physicality and versatility made him a nightmare for opposing quarterbacks and running backs. During his four seasons with the Bears, Marshall racked up impressive stats, including 376 tackles, 16.5 sacks, and eight interceptions. His 1986 season was especially notable as he recorded 5.5 sacks and five interceptions, earning him his first All-Pro selection. Marshall's blend of speed, power, and football intelligence made him a cornerstone of Chicago's defense and one of the most respected linebackers in the game. His impact extended beyond the stats. He was a player who could shift momentum with a single hit or clutch play, making him a valuable asset for any team looking to dominate defensively. Free agency landscape in the 1980s. Before Wilbur Marshall's move, the NFL's free agency rules heavily favored the teams, making it difficult for players to move freely. During the 1980s, the system was known as Plan B, free agency. This structure allowed teams to protect a significant portion of their roster each season, typically about 37 players, while the rest were left as restricted free agents. Even if a player was technically a free agent, their current team, retained the right to match any offers or receive draft pick compensation from a team that signed them. This structure gave teams significant leverage over player contracts, limiting their mobility and negotiating power. Players like Marshall could be offered better deals elsewhere but had to wait for their original team's decision, often leading to lower salaries and fewer opportunities to choose their destination. The Bears' decision. When the Washington Redskins made an offer to Wilbur Marshall in 1988, the Chicago Bears had a critical choice. 
match the five-year, $6 million offer, or let Marshall walk and receive draft compensation in return. The Bears ultimately declined to match the offer. Several factors influenced their decision, including the financial aspects and the broader team strategy. For the Bears, spending such a large sum on a defensive player, even one as valuable as Marshall, was a significant financial risk. They believed that the draft picks they would gain from the Redskins could be used to build future talent. The choice to let Marshall go also stemmed from the Bears' confidence in their remaining defensive core, trusting that their system could remain effective without him. However, the decision signaled a shift in how teams weighed player value against long-term investments, and it became a pivotal moment in the league's evolving attitude toward player contracts. The Washington Redskins offer. The Redskins' decision to offer Wilbur Marshall a $6 million contract over five years was groundbreaking. At that time, such a lucrative deal for a defensive player, especially a linebacker, was almost unheard of. The offer reflected how highly the Redskins valued Marshall's skills and leadership on the field. The contract not only set a new benchmark for defensive player salaries, but also highlighted the growing willingness of certain franchises to invest heavily in proven talent. For Washington, the move was about more than just acquiring a top player. It was a statement that they were willing to challenge the status quo of restrictive free agency. This bold strategy positioned them as a team ready to compete at the highest level by aggressively pursuing talent, even if it meant giving up two first round draft picks as compensation to the Bears. Marshall's signing sent shockwaves through the league, marking the beginning of a new era where teams had to consider the rising cost of retaining elite players. Player compensation rules. Wilbur Marshall's move to the Washington Redskins in 1988 didn't come without a significant cost. At the time, the NFL's compensation system for signing another team's free agent was strict. When the Redskins offered Marshall a five-year, $6 million contract and the Bears declined to match it, Washington was required to send two first-round draft picks to Chicago. This compensation system, which aimed to deter teams from signing away valuable players, made Marshall's signing a high-stakes decision. For the Redskins, the price was steep. They were giving up potential future stars in exchange for an established defensive powerhouse. For the Bears, it meant losing a key player, but gaining draft capital, which they believed could be invested in the long-term success of their roster. This trade-off highlighted the risks teams faced when engaging in early free agency moves, where the potential for immediate impact was weighed against the promise of future talent. First free agent move in a decade. Marshall's signing was historic for another reason. It was the first time in over 11 years that a free agent switched teams under this system. The NFL had seen little player movement through free agency, largely because of the restrictive rules that favored team control over player mobility. Marshall's decision to sign with Washington shattered this norm. It demonstrated that a player, particularly a defensive star, could successfully leverage free agency to secure a better deal and change teams. This shift was significant as it set a precedent that players could explore opportunities beyond their original teams, provided they had the leverage and performance to command attention. It symbolized the beginning of a new era where players started to challenge their status as assets controlled by franchises seeking a fair valuation of their contributions on the field. Reactions from the NFL community. Marshall's move sent shockwaves throughout the NFL. Team owners and general managers, accustomed to a relatively stable free agency environment, were now confronted with the reality that top players could indeed change teams if the price was right. Many owners saw the deal as a sign of shifting power dynamics. 
where player demands could outweigh a team's desire to maintain the status quo. Some expressed concerns about the potential for escalating salaries and the impact on smaller market teams that might struggle to compete with wealthier franchises in the new landscape. Fans had mixed reactions. Redskin supporters were thrilled to add a proven playmaker like Marshall, hoping his presence would boost their championship chances. Bears fans, however, were disappointed to see such a pivotal defensive piece leave, especially given how integral he had been to their previous successes. The move sparked debates among analysts and commentators about the future of free agency, questioning whether more players would follow Marshall's path or if the steep compensation requirements would continue to limit such moves. This bold signing by the Redskins and Marshall's willingness to embrace the new opportunity challenged the entire league's approach to player movement. It set the stage for future battles over free agency rights, making it clear that the old model of team control would not hold forever. The ripple effects of this shift would be felt for years as players began to recognize their potential to change the game's business dynamics. NFL's reaction to player mobility. Wilbur Marshall's move to the Washington Redskins in 1988 was more than just a contract. It was a direct challenge to the NFL's established order. For decades, the league had maintained tight control over player movements through a restrictive free agency system, ensuring that teams retained significant leverage over player contracts. When Marshall made the jump to the Redskins, it forced the NFL to confront a new reality where players could exercise more freedom in choosing their teams. The league was wary of this shift, fearing that greater player mobility could undermine competitive balance. Owners and executives voiced concerns that a more open market could allow wealthier teams to dominate, outbidding smaller franchises for top talent. The move also sparked debates within the league about the need for clearer, more balanced policies that could maintain team control while acknowledging the rights of players. Legal battles and policy shifts Marshall's signing, though significant, was just the beginning of a larger struggle over free agency. Throughout the late 1980s and early 1990s, the NFL faced increasing pressure from players who sought more freedom and fairer compensation. One of the pivotal legal battles during this time was the Freeman McNeil case in 1992. This lawsuit, brought by a group of players, challenged the restrictive nature of the NFL's Plan B free agency system, which allowed teams to retain significant control over players even after their contracts expired. The court ruled in favor of the players, deeming that Plan B was too restrictive and unfairly limited their earning potential. The result of this ruling had a major impact on future collective bargaining agreements CBAs, between the NFL and the NFL Players Association, NFLPA. The decision set the stage for the 1993 CBA, which officially introduced unrestricted free agency and a salary cap, fundamentally reshaping the business side of the league. Now, players could test the open market once their contracts expired, allowing them to negotiate with any team without facing the same obstacles as before. This policy shift was a direct response to the legal challenges and the changing expectations set in motion by cases like Marshall's. The role of player unions, the NFLPA played a crucial role in advocating for these changes, using Marshall's signing as a key example of how restrictive the old system had been. The union had long pushed for greater player rights and was instrumental in supporting the legal battles that ultimately led to changes in the free agency rules. Marshall's willingness to accept the Redskins' offer, even with the compensation requirements, demonstrated that players could and should have more control over their career paths. The NFLPA used this moment to rally support from players across the league emphasizing the importance of collective action in securing better contracts and working conditions. The association's efforts culminated in the 1993 CBA, which became a landmark agreement in the NFL, establishing frameworks for free agency, minimum salaries, and revenue sharing. Marshall's case provided a powerful narrative of player empowerment, illustrating how a single contract 
could set off a wave of reforms that ultimately benefited generations of athletes to come. This era marked a turning point for the NFL, where the balance of power between players and owners began to shift, laying the groundwork for the modern free agency system we see today. The legal and policy changes that followed Marshall's move were not just about one player, they were about redefining the relationship between the league and its athletes, reshaping the landscape of professional football forever. Player movement in the 1990s. Wilbur Marshall's move to the Washington Redskins in 1988 opened the door for a new era of player freedom in the NFL, setting a precedent that would inspire many athletes to explore free agency in the years that followed. Throughout the 1990s, players who once faced barriers to mobility saw an opportunity to test the market similar to Marshall's groundbreaking move. High-profile players began to sign deals with new teams, reshaping rosters across the league and creating a more competitive market. For the first time, players had genuine leverage in contract negotiations, knowing they could attract offers from multiple teams. This shift in power dynamics led to a more fluid market where star players moved more freely, making the NFL landscape more unpredictable and competitive. Salary cap and free agency, evolution. A key development that reshaped free agency was the introduction of the NFL salary cap in 1994. This change emerged as a part of the new collective bargaining agreement, directly influenced by the earlier legal battles over player rights and free agency. The salary cap set a limit on how much teams could spend on player salaries, aiming to maintain competitive balance across the league. While the salary cap imposed new constraints on teams, it also solidified the player's right to negotiate freely once their contracts expired. Teams now had to make strategic choices about which players to prioritize and how to allocate their budgets, creating a new era of strategy in team building. The introduction of the cap meant that teams could no longer simply outspend their competitors. Instead, they had to be smart about managing their roster under financial constraints. This environment forced general managers to weigh the value of seasoned veterans like Marshall against younger, potentially cheaper talent. However, the new system also guaranteed that players who reached free agency had the chance to sign deals that better reflected their market value, a direct evolution from the conditions that Marshall's move had helped to change. Comparison to modern contracts, Marshall's $6 million deal with the Redskins, though revolutionary at the time, pales in comparison to today's NFL contracts. His contract broke barriers in the late 1980s, but now star players regularly sign deals worth hundreds of millions. For example, quarterbacks like Patrick Mahomes have signed contracts exceeding $400 million with substantial portions guaranteed. Even defensive players, Marshall's peers in terms of impact on the field, command massive salaries today with players like Aaron Donald and Khalil Mack signing deals worth over $100 million. While the numbers have grown exponentially, the core principle remains the same. A player's value is determined by their impact and the market's willingness to pay for it. Marshall's move was pivotal because it challenged the NFL's restrictive norms and allowed players to realize their worth. His actions laid the groundwork for a future where players could capitalize on their talents and negotiate deals that reflected their contributions to the game. Today's blockbuster contracts trace their roots back to the precedent set by Marshall, marking his legacy as a trailblazer in the evolution of player rights and free agency. Marshall's career post Redskins, after signing with the Washington Redskins, Wilbur Marshall continued to excel on the field, proving his worth as a top-tier linebacker. He played a crucial role in leading the Redskins to their Super Bowl victory in the 1991 season, where they defeated the Buffalo Bills 37-24 in Super Bowl 26. During that season, Marshall's performance was vital, as he recorded several sacks and made key plays throughout the playoffs, 
including three sacks in a dominant NFC Championship game against the Detroit Lions. His contributions help solidify the Redskins' defense as one of the best in the league. Following his time with the Redskins, Marshall continued his NFL career with stints at the Houston Oilers, Arizona Cardinals, and New York Jets, eventually retiring in 1995. Over his 12-year career, Marshall left a lasting impact with his aggressive playing style and versatility, recording over 1,000 tackles and 45 sacks, struggles post-career. Despite his on-field success, Marshall faced significant struggles after leaving the game. Like many former players, he dealt with severe injuries sustained during his career, including chronic pain in his spine, shoulders, and knees. These injuries eventually became the subject of a legal battle with the NFL over disability benefits. Marshall argued that the league's player retirement plan owed him full disability benefits due to the extent of his injuries, a fight that took years to resolve. He ultimately won the case in 2008, but by then, the financial and physical toll had left him in a challenging position, including filing for bankruptcy. His experience highlighted the broader issue of how the NFL and its players handle long-term health consequences, making him an advocate for better post-career support for players. Marshall's perspective. Marshall has spoken about the impact of his 1988 contract move and the legacy it left behind. He often emphasized the importance of players having the freedom to choose their path, even if it meant challenging the norms of the time. In interviews, he reflected on how he didn't intend to become a symbol for change, but realized the significance of his decision as time passed. Marshall has shared that, despite the hardships he faced after his playing days, He's proud to have played a role in shaping the landscape of NFL free agency. His story is a reminder of the sacrifices players make, both on and off the field, and how pivotal moments like his move to the Redskins can echo through the years, impacting the opportunities available to future generations of players. Reflection on NFL Evolution Wilbur Marshall's bold decision to sign with the Washington Redskins in 1988 marked a turning point in the NFL's player market. His move challenged the restrictive free agency rules of the time and demonstrated that players could and should have the power to seek better contracts. The ripple effects of his decision influenced the development of a more open and competitive free agency system, ultimately leading to the introduction of unrestricted free agency and a salary cap. Today, players have the freedom to explore opportunities that best fit their career goals and financial aspirations, something that was far more limited before Marshall's groundbreaking move. The modern NFL, with its dynamic player market and big money contracts, is a direct result of the changes that began with his decision. Lessons for future players. Current NFL players can learn a lot from Marshall's story. His willingness to challenge the norms of his time is a reminder that standing up for what you believe you're worth can create long-term change, not just for yourself, but for those who come after you. Marshall's case shows that change in sports often comes from those willing to take risks and challenge the status quo, even when it's unpopular. It underscores the importance of knowing your value as a player and being ready to pursue opportunities that reflect that worth even when it involves uncertainty his story serves as both a warning and an inspiration it's about fighting for what's right but also recognizing the challenges that can come with breaking new ground closing question call to action would today's free agency market be the same without wilbur marshall's bold move how different might the nfl look if no one had ever tested those early boundaries let us know what you think in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe for more deep dives into the moments that shaped the game. Encourage engagement. Wilbur Marshall's story is a fascinating piece of NFL history, but does he get the recognition he truly deserves for changing the game? What do you think? Did his bold move set the stage for today's player empowerment? Or would the NFL have evolved this way without him? Share your thoughts in the comments below. 
How do you feel free agency has changed over the years? And do you think players today understand the path that was paved for them? We'd love to hear your perspective on this crucial moment in sports history. Thank you for watching this deep dive into Wilbur Marshall's impact on NFL free agency. If you enjoyed learning about how a single decision helped reshape the league, make sure to check out our other videos on pivotal moments in NFL history. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss out on our latest uploads. And if you found this video interesting, give it a thumbs up and share it with fellow football fans. See you in the next one.